Welcome to Acorn to Oak with Penny Quail Pierce and co-host Matthew Donaghy. Within each acorn, there is the DNA that strives to be a mighty oak tree. All it needs to reach its potential for greatness is to be activated. You are the acorn. On this show, we will share with you the tools and guidance you need to grow into the person you are meant to be. And now your host, Penny Quail Pierce and co-host Matthew Donaghy. Good evening, it's Penny. I hope everybody's well um, and connected. Um, Matthew's going to be a bit late. I think he's having problems connecting to the show, but hopefully he'll be with us soon. Um, So you've got me. Isn't that wonderful? So what we're going to be uh, discussing and talking about tonight, and depending on whether Matthew gets here or not, um, we may have time for... Uh, creative visualization is to actually talk about one of the main archetypes um, that we have present in our lives and it's called the saboteur and the saboteur is you know comes up into our lives when we're stressed uh, when we're feeling um, like we can't uh, connect to our authentic selves and it's can be a pretty amazing um, thing to, to, to actually have and it's one of the most difficult parts of ourselves to understand. You know, its purpose is not really to sabotage us but to help us learn the many ways in which we undermine ourselves. So, you know, how often do we set plans in motion only to end up standing in our own ways um, because of the fears that undermine those optimistic plans? You know, you, you know, it's always the way, isn't it? Um, it's very relevant. Uh, in the new year, we decide we're going to have, uh, you know, we're changing our lives and, you know, in the first few days, it's like, yes, these are my New Year's re- resolutions and I'm going to leave, uh, lose weight, give up smoking, exercise more, I'm going to spend more time with my children and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm never going to be late for work again. And, you know, um, my financial goals is I'm going to earn, you know, $10,000 a month or whatever it is. And then suddenly (coughs) we uh, begin to, you know, the, the relationship that we have with our saboteur and then we destroy all of these good intentions uh, because we begin to imagine all sorts of different painful outcomes. Maybe, you know, we've decided that we're going to go to the gym, but then we, you know, the first week we're really good about it and we go three times a week and, you know, we're beginning to enjoy it. But then... Yeah, a friend may call us uh, and ask us to go out for a meal. So, you know, we decide not to go. And then we start to slip into different behaviours. And we then end up just, you know, not going to the gym at all. Although we've paid probably uh, a few hundred bucks or a few hundred pounds for the membership. You know, you begin uh, a working or you may begin a a working relationship with another person. And once again, you find you're in a power struggle Uh, that could be settled peacefully, but you fall into the same destructive patterns because you you actually fear the other person and maybe their skills are slightly different from you and you begin to feel like, um, you know, the low self-esteem comes up. Uh, And, you know, the saboteur's fears and issues are all related to low self-esteem that causes you to make choices that block your own empowerment and success. You know, you need to face this powerful part of yourself uh, that we all possess and make it an ally, you know, a friend. 
And when you do, you find it calls your attention to situations in which you are in danger of being sabotaged or sabotaging yourself. You know, it's once you're comfortable with the saboteur, you learn to hear and heed the warnings that it will bring you, saving you, you know, yourself untold grief from making the same mistakes over and over again, you know. However, if you ignore it, the shadow saboteur will manifest in forms of self-destructive behaviour or the desire to undermine others. And it's it's one of the big four main archetypes that we all have in our lives. And, you know, the other three will deal with it on in different radio shows. But the other three, just so you're aware, is, you know, the saboteur, obviously, that we're talking about tonight, the victim, um, the prostitute, and the inner child. And I don't know if any of you know of uh, Caroline Mice's work on archetypes. She's done some astonishing work and helps us all get to grips with these different types of energies because that's all archetypes are. They're different energies that tend to be present in our lives. And we have, you know, we have 12 main archetypes that we're working with at any one time. And, you know, the saboteur obviously is one of the most influ influential, I can't even say that, where's Matthew? <laughs> influential um, characters that can be very, very prominent. And, you know, I know within my own life, you know, the saboteur has raised its head, and I should say the um, shadow saboteur has raised its head uh, when maybe I'm taking on a new project uh, or working on something. And, you know, I go into, like I was uh, today, I'm in the middle of doing a new website, and uh, the saboteur, the, well, the shadow saboteur, tells me that I'm a techno nerd. In other words, I have no technical expertise whatsoever, which is actually not true. I, I can quite easily um, set up a new website with no, no two ways uh, and not too much of a problem. It takes time. And wouldn't I just love to hand it on to somebody else? But um, the person who, Gemma, who does my admin was not around today. So it, uh, it was a case of uh, suck it up, Penny. This is what you're doing. And so I, I was basically doing it. But it's amazing how the voices in your head will then turn, just turn around and say to you, you have no idea. Do I uh, cut and paste this or do I drag it and drop it? Do What, what am I actually doing? And I wouldn't necessarily be able to explain it all to you. But when I'm actually focused on it, it makes sense to me at that time. And, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, you may well want to have a look at um, uh, what are some of the work that I've been doing today, because one of the things for me right here, right now, is doing a little bit of rebranding. And I used um, the positive side of the saboteur today to actually look at it and go, well, what is it? What is the actual message that I want to get across to people? And I suppose for me, it's all about the, what the real truth is. Which, and so I've, um, uh, as I said, I've been working today on a um, new website, which is called The Truth Is. And, you know, and it's very much about you using that statement. The truth is, you know, the saboteur within us 
is alive and kicking. And as I was saying, um, if we don't make a friend of it, if we don't make an ally of it, that is when it will start to misbehave. So um, after the break, whenever we go into the break, what I would like to share with you is um, a creative visualization of going in and meeting your inner saboteur. And it is it's a helpful visualization to do purely for the reason that, you know, we want to uh, make a friend. And if we don't go within, we will go without the experience of meeting the saboteur and getting that saboteur on your side so that uh, you can do um, new projects without feeling like you're being sabotaged. You can talk to the um, in a saboteur and you know the best way of dealing with energies that decide to or you feel like you're being attacked by these energies is to actually give it a different job give it a job to do so that you know most energy likes to be in flow and if you allow it to flow with guidance it will be a, a huge uh, creative experience for you but if you don't I give it a job it will go and seek jobs and because energy loves to be in flow so it will actually manifest in the form as I was saying earlier on self-destructive behavior um, or it will try and undermine others um, because it finds others uh, competition um, and again it's just a case of you know if we it, the shadow side of the saboteur just likes to be busy and you know the fact is sometimes we don't realize that we have these energies within us and therefore we need to um, be able to um, use them constructively uh, it's like uh, you know I always look at the saboteur like my two-year-old son you know if he's not busy he gets you know his tendency is he likes to be busy therefore if he's not he will start being disruptive you know he likes to he'll pick things up or he'll start throwing things or you know he's a terrible too and <laughs> he just wants uh your attention and therefore when a two-year-old and i could pretty much say a saboteur sometimes behaves like a two-year-old it they just want attention and love and guidance and you know if you're there 100 percent with them that's great but if you're not that's when you start actually realizing um you know that they are misbehaving um so you know bored two-year-olds are much like um, a sabbat you know the shadow side of saboteur so it's it's just really interesting when you look at the bigger picture you start to realize that if you can uh, get to know yourself on a real fundamental and authentic level you can uh, as I was saying earlier on, um, negate a huge amount of untold grief um, and making the same mistakes over and over again. So um, we'll be coming up for a break pretty soon, but after the break, what I would like to do is get you ready for that visualization. So we'll see you soon.
conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. I'm Kathy Williams, host of Sexy Mom Abundant Life radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. On the show, we explore living abundantly in every area of your life. Ways to let go of limiting patterns and beliefs and to step into the flow of creativity and possibility, knowing you are supported by the universe. We are talking about your life. Ever wonder, is this as good as it gets? No, it could be so much better. At Acorn to Oak, we know you are seeking more happiness, joy, unconditional love, financial freedom, passion, and purpose. Find your unique mojo and live an extraordinary life. Want to know more? Contact us at our website, acorntooak.org.uk. One in three adults has prediabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your football buddy, your football buddy, or you, your best man. Your worst man. You, your dog walker. Your cat jogger. While one in three adults has prediabetes, with early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihadprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. So we're back from the break, and um, Matthew's managed to join us, which is um, really helpful. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to allow him <laughs> some time to say hello. And we've been talking about the senator, um, Matthew. So we've just been just uh, talking about it. And what we'll, what I've uh, said we'll do at some stage, it may be uh, at this stage or it may be after the second break where we'll do uh, creative visualization for the listeners and to, uh, to basically help them make a friend uh, of the saboteur. So is there anything that you would like to say or add? Um, because I know obviously you've done uh, work around your own saboteur. Oh, Matthew, we just lost Matthew again. So hopefully um, he'll come back. Yes, um, thank you. Uh, just to say good evening to everybody. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, glad I made it, uh, having a slight technical issue. Um, and yes, Penny, uh, Saboteur's uh, archetype has been certainly something I've done a lot of work on myself. Um, and I think it's it's really it's, it's a really interesting archetype. It's, uh, it's almost like you can, or for me, I was sabotaging myself from success. And it was really interesting when you think, well, why would I, why would I do that? Um, and it can be down to sort of experiences that you've had through perhaps childhood um, around low self-esteem, which I, I had a lot around. And yeah, what, what shocked me was how the sabotage will, uh, how much it can come in and it's about making it a friend. It's, uh, it's, it's a part of our personality which is created because of certain things we experience and they're there to, to serve us. Um, and when I, when I first found out about them, they, they sounded all big and, big and scary, like parts of our personality that aren't necessarily positive. But actually, sometimes the, the only way we can be taught is through the negative. So that's very much how I see 
um, archetypes is, um, especially saboteur, is it's it's creating a behaviour for you to become aware of, so that you can change it. Um, and the work I've done with my saboteur, it, it, it's just fascinating. Um, it really opens up a lot of understanding around how how we work as as, as people um, and our minds and what we what we create. Um, so for me, it's been an, an, an epic journey um, through the archetypes, especially Saboteur, because it was one of my main ones. Um, I was sharing earlier on, so um, Matthew, that... I um, that's helpful. <laughs> yeah, I was sharing earlier on that I've uh, been doing some work on, on building a new um, website um, today. And... Um, it was really quite interesting because the saboteur was up, you know, with its usual, you know, mind chatter of, you know, you're a techno nerd, <laughs> you're never going to get this right, and etc. Uh, etc. etc. Et and maybe I should share with the listeners the reason I think I uh, I have those thoughts is when I my husband is a um, uh, a web developer and therefore he whenever I see him working on the computer he works at such a speed and I know I can't work at that speed on a computer I you know attend to I need time um, to get things right uh, but actually it was interesting some of the the inner dialogue I was having with uh, the saboteur today going you know I am actually pretty good at this and would you like to help me and I'd just like you to find you know try help me try and find this information and how I'm going to be able to do that and I ended up doing um, a lot of uh, Googling on how to do this and how to do that. But um, it worked well. And um, the website or the lead page, which I've used to, to build a small website, is up and published. It's, it's moving. So obviously there's going to be need to be some tweaks on it. But as I was saying, you know, for me, it was it's very much about using that saboteur just to say, you know, I've got a day to do this. I've got less than a day to do this. I actually started work on it um, around about 12 o'clock when I came when I came back from uh, having an appointment. And so it's it's worked well and it's was actually the last tweaks were were done at about half past eight this evening. So it's, you know, it's obviously the, for us, the show is at, at nine o'clock at night. So it was about eight, eight hours of work, but I've managed to get it done. So that's trying to get your saboteur on your side instead of um, sabotaging you with too many uh, negative thoughts. You know, so the saboteur is, you know, the positive side of the saboteur is very, very quite positive. And as I said, you can get it working for you. But it's the sh the shadow side of the saboteur, which actually creates the problem and makes us do unhel you know, uh, unhelpful behavior again and again and again. So, um that's that's really a positive yeah. the visualization that i w would like to do after the second break is about um 10 to 15 minutes long and just to prepare you so you're ready after the break is you want to be um in a comfortable chair or maybe lying down i always love to lie down when i'm doing a visualization but that's just me and you may want to dim the lights you may want to light a candle um and you also uh, don't don't want to be disturbed by the dog children or anything else so if you're listening to this uh not live but later on just make sure you've got all of those things in place before the second break okay so that you're ready to as i say hit the ground running 
But, um, you know, like everything, you know, creative visualizations are just a way of practicing the future. You know, they are, you know, we tend to think that we have no um, idea what the future is going to hold. But one of the important tricks with using um, creative visualizations, it's a huge life hack because you can practice exactly what you would like to create in the future. And it's like, you know, any good coach, any good sports coach would tell you the same is, you know, the Olympic stars um, always visualize themselves winning, especially the really successful ones. Obviously, you know, I, I'm thinking about the Olympics right now and, you know, the gold medal winners will always say to you, they visualized them going through if they're a runner, the, the end tape, or, you know, if they're a gymnast, they go through their routine and they visualize their routine as well as physically preparing their body. It's about uh, preparing the mind and preparing our, you know, uh, everything. So, you know, it's really, uh, you know, research shows us that if you've got someone sitting down, you know, a pianist sitting down and they're playing a piano, if they're visualizing it, the same parts of the brain light up as to if they were physically doing it or if they are just mentally visualizing it. And so we know it works. Science has shown visualizations work. It's just uh, for me, uh, with my client base, I think it's a very underutilized tool. I don't know what you what your thoughts on that, Matthew, are, but I think, you know, we should be visualizing more and more and more because the more practiced we are at the art of using creative visualizations, the easier it becomes. So any thoughts on that, Matthew, if you're still with us? Yeah, I mean... I... <laughs> I, I absolutely love creative visualizations. I think um, it's I've, I've got a few I do myself regularly, um, just on um, on certain things in my life. And you, you're so bang on, Penny. It's um, with the creative visualizations. It's it's about um, I know we've mentioned on previous shows. It's about picking using the different senses to create the 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 full. Um, experience of a visualization so the the primary concentration is with the third eye and sort of trying to visualize with that but also while you're going through the creative visualization if we mention a sound or um, sometimes we talk about walking through a meadow as we're leading you in and it's about sort of hearing the grass crunch or the leaves crunch under your feet and smelling the air of, of just maybe fresh cut grass and I, f I find you can you can really create and, and visualize um, your preferences especially around business and and how you if you're working on a project or you have a vision of a, a family life or a, a home you can bring that in but with, obviously with working with the saboteur and, and and the archetype we're going to be working with it's it's really sort of focusing and realizing the power of that you can actually go in and connect and meet with a, a part of yourself that you didn't know was there um that's there to help you that at the moment initially seems as though it's not helping you um but as I said before, it's, um, spirit is very um, gentle at first and will whisper in your ear and suggest you may do something different than what you're doing. Um, and if you're not listening, then it will start talking to you. And if you don't hear the talking, it will start shouting. And if you don't hear the shouting, it will perhaps give you a, a clip round the ear, as we would say in England. And that's very much what the saboteur and other archetypes will do. They will call out and create sort of behaviours to make you realise what you're doing and how you're 
perhaps putting yourself off track. Um, and that that's the shadow side, and it will manifest in the form of self-destructive behaviours uh, um, to show you what you're doing wrong. Um, the trouble is, unless we, unless you a know about it, and b connect with that part and actually get to know yourself better, then it can, it can, like I say, lead to very self-destructive behaviours. Um, so I, I love creative visualisations, and I think mixing the two up is just absolutely fantastic. Um, I know, I know, we've done a few together, Penny. So. Uh, <laughs> I, I always love the the visualizations, and I think they're just the power of them is is it exceptional. Whether you're going in to meet another part of self and working on that side of things, or whether you're just going on going on a journey just to explore your imagination, that's all. That's great. Um, but also, you can be specific around other stuff. I know you mentioned sports stars, so Formula One drivers they will visualize their pole lap in order to try and gain pole and if you if you've already seen it and heard it and felt it and smelt it when you come to do it it just just rolls it just seems to to happen um, i so think it's it, huge yeah i think it's because it, it takes you actually works yeah when you actually um visualize it it you know you you get to do it uh, time and again and therefore when you're actually when the actual time has come to you know to create your future or to have that race or to do that uh, sports event or whatever it is um you're in your comfort zone it's it there's no there's no surprises because you've already rehearsed it and rehearsed it and you know, very much for me, I use creative visualizations every day of my life because, you know, before I go to sleep, I've already rehearsed what I'm going to do when I first wake up. And, you know, it's it's it is therefore very easy. You know, I mean, I wake up and, you know, my son is lying next to me and my husband is on the other side of the bed and it's just you know, waking up and, and, you know, picking out those magic moments and realising that, you know, I don't want to miss a moment, you know, because, you know, they are magic moments and you string them together like a priceless, you know, pearl necklace. And, you know, I, I, it's, it's very much the same with, you know, running acorn to oak is we rehearse. You know, you know me, six P's, planning and preparation prevent piss poor performance. And, you know, it is with rehearsing um, uh, and making sure that actually there are no surprises. Um, and it therefore, it puts you into the, um, the zone where, uh, I don't know in America what you use to grease wheels, but we call it WD-40. So it's the WD-40 of the universe. Things go well. Uh, and therefore, there are, as I said, no surprises, no suffering, no uh, great um, angst or gnashing of teeth or beating of chests. And, you know, when we realise that, if we can get into the flow of the universe, it is a delightful ride. You know, those wheels are greased. And, you know, it's very comfortable. We don't have to bump down the road um, in an old banger because we've greased the wheels and everything is working. And it is surprising how many people don't actually uh, realise that life needs a certain amount of preparation, you know, and planning. And once you've done that, it, this is why, you know, successful people excel, is they realise they have to rehearse uh, the future and what uh, rehearse what they would like to manifest in their daily lives. And once you've done it, it's, it's magical. And, you know, it's amazing. You only have to miss a day or two and you suddenly realise 
hey, why is life bumpy right now? <laughs> it's like, because I haven't been doing my daily practice or my daily routine of rehearsing what, how my commute to work is going to look or how um, when I arrive at work, everybody's really pleased to see me. And you don't just get grunts or, or you know, shakings of heads. So we'll come back and you may want a pen and paper by your side so you can write things down after the visualisation. We'll see you after the break. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. We are talking about your life. Ever wonder, is this as good as it gets? No, it could be so much better. At Acorn to Oak, we know you are seeking more happiness, joy, unconditional love, financial freedom, passion, and purpose. Find your unique mojo and live an extraordinary life. Want to know more? Contact us at our website, acorntooak.org.uk. Long ago, you wouldn't think of galloping on a horse while doing calligraphy, and you wouldn't have attempted to ride your bike while typing a letter. Yet you think you can safely operate a multi-ton vehicle while texting? Behind the wheel is no place to multitask. If you want to BRB, drive now and text later. Lives depend on it. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. So, hi, uh, welcome back. So, I hope that you are now sitting in a comfortable chair. Lie down if you prefer. Make sure that you're not going to be disturbed and have a notebook and pen at your side so that you can record your journey as soon as it's over. The other thing that you may want to do instead is uh, narrate the journey into a tape recorder as it happens or your iPhone or whatever it is, do an audio uh, memo. So uh, starting off, we just want you to tense and relax different muscle groups and just start tensing the muscles in your feet. Tense, tense, tense and relax. Then tensing the muscles in your calves, tense, 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 and relax. Then tensing your thighs, tense, 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 and relax. Then tensing the muscles in your pelvis and your tummy, tense, 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 and relax. Then tensing the muscles in your chest, in your arms, in your hands. Tense, tense, tense. And relax. 
Then tensing the muscles in your neck and your face. Tense, tense, tense. And relax. And then the whole body. Your feet, your legs, your arms, your hands, your pelvis, your chest, your neck, your face. Tense, tense, tense. And relax. And then I just want you to breathe in and out. Whenever, you know, just in a nice natural rhythm. And in your mind's eye, I'd like you to uh, see the colour red and the, numbers, and the number seven. And just breathe it out. And then uh, in your mind's eye, I'd like you to see the colour orange and the number six. And just breathe it out. Then imagine uh, in your own mind's eye the colour yellow and the number five. And then just breathe it out. And in your mind's eye, I'd like you to imagine the colour green and the number four. And just breathe it out. In your own mind's eye, the colour blue and the number three. And just breathe it out. And then imagine in your own mind's eye, the colour purple and the number two. And just breathe it out. And then imagine in your own mind's eye the colour violet and the number one. And just breathe it out. And I want you to imagine that you're standing in a corridor. The walls could be painted or wallpapered or they could be brick. It doesn't really matter, but see it in your own mind's eye. You start to walk down that corridor and you look up at the door at the end. And you, as you do, you look at the floor, which could be carpeted. It could be wooden. It could be tiled. Again, it doesn't really matter. But see it in your own mind's eye. As you arrive at the door, you look for the handle which could be brass, it could be china, it could be wooden. Again, it doesn't really matter, but see it in your own mind's eye. You open the door and you find yourself in a beautiful woodland and you notice there's a path. The sunshine dapples through the trees and you notice many different shades of green in the leaves. Look at the path beneath your feet. It could be grass, a grassy track or a well-trodden earthen path. Or covered with autumn leaves. Or it could be the summer. What are you wearing on your feet? Listen to the sound around you. Maybe the birds are singing. The rustle of the leaves in the breeze. And there may be a scurry of small animals or a burbling brook. Breathe in the woodland smells. Use all your senses to make it come alive. So as you move down the path, you just notice everything that is around you. Follow the path wherever it leads you till you come to a clearing. It is here that you will meet that part of you which grows through struggle. In the clearing there may be a tumble down shed or a fallen wooden trunk or a large flat boulder. Inside the shed or sitting on the tree, a trunk or boulder 
will be a person or creature or object. This is the part of you which grows through struggle and self-sabotage. Let's take, let it take whatever form it takes, allowing the imagination to become clearer as you approach it. Say hello to the saboteur in a friendly way. Tell it that you wish to learn how to become more aware of its actions and ask yourself these questions. What fears have the most authority? What happens when the fi that fear overtakes me? Does it make me silent? Do I allow people to speak for me? Do I agree that something, some things out of fear that I would otherwise would not agree to? Have I let creative opportunities pass me by? How conscious am I in the moment that I am sabotaging myself? Am I able to recognise the saboteur in others? Would I be able to offer others advice about how to challenge one saboteur? If so, what would that be? Wait patiently for the replies. The answers will come of thoughts, images, memories, sensations, or a sudden flash of intuition. Your mind may whisper, you're just making it up. So be prepared for this. You may want to open your eyes and just jot some of the answers down. Or you may wait and do that when you've finished. Recognise that the saboteur has been trying to help you grow in the only way it knows how. It has just been, it's been trying to be your friend. So thank it for its help and explain that you are learning new ways of growing which you believe will be more enjoyable and effective. Tell it that you wish to grow through joy from now on by reaching for your dreams, taking 100% responsibility, following your heart, releasing your creativity and genius, discovering more and more ways of your own wholeness. Ask the saboteur whether it will help you grow through joy and deal with any reservations it may have. Once it agrees to help, give it a new job to do. Perhaps it would like to send you a wake-up signal if you are harbouring negative thoughts or beliefs or blaming or forgetting to reach for your dreams. Or it may be making a simple task into a struggle. If so, agree on how it can gently send you a message. It's important to realise that nothing may come up immediately and that's okay. Keep working with it and one day you will get a message that quite literally changes your life forever. Now feel the love for this part of self and watch it as it transforms by your, is transformed by your love. It might become radiant with life or completely change its form. Finally, absorb it into your body, becoming one with that part of self again. Then stand up and continue 
down the path until you come to a waterfall in the heart of the forest. Hear the sound of the waterfall and feel the water splish splashing up against you. Now take off your clothes and step into the waterfall. Feel the water splashing around your head and body. Ask the waterfall to wash away any last traces of growing through struggle. To wash away any self-sabotage, martyrdom, any self-pity, any belief that the universe wishes you to suffer and see the water become murky at your feet as your struggle, self-sabotage and martyrdom dissolves into the water and are washed away forever. Tell the waterfall that you are now willing to grow through joy, courage, trust and the vision that you are willing to, to love and be loved, that you are willing to create a heaven on earth and feel the spirit of the water surrounding you, adding its energy to your affirmation. You get out of the waterfall and find a fluffy towel on a nearby rock, and you lovingly dry off your body, and notice it has changed. It is stronger, lighter, and more luminous. You dress and start back along the forest path. You notice that how you are walking has changed. It's lighter, more energised, more purposeful. You also notice that there is an excited anticipation and commitment to getting back to your everyday life, to implement the changes you've reaped and the benefits of doing the inner work. You see the door to the corridor. You reach for the handle and open it. Stepping into the corridor, you walk back the way that you came. With each step, you take out, you come back into your body, back into normal time, back into this space, gently back into your room. When you're ready, Stretch and wriggle your fingers and your toes and te take another deep breath as you allow your eyes to open. Totally energised and energetically balanced, ready to re live the rest of your life, you slowly sit up. Maybe take a drink of water. And you may want to record everything that took place on your inner journey. If you seriously want to use the, these tools to gain knowledge and understanding of self, both Matthew and I would highly recommend you write down a short reflection on the journey that you've just taken and the experiences you've just had. And there's five questions we usually use when we're looking at a reflection. You may want to write in your journal or a piece of paper or a scrap, you know, whatever you need. And just describe what happened on that journey. What was good about it? What was bad about it? And what did you learn? What would you do differently next time? We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us and take care.